Okay, hello. Um, I wanted to do one last, uh, you know, I didn't cover a word problem for systems of inequalities, and I thought, you know, I, sh I should probably do that. So I'm going to tack this on, make another separate video just for word problems. Now, I'm only going to work one word problem here. Uh, most of these are for you to figure out, but sometimes it just helps to see a nice solid example, right? I, I understand. So let's go through it. So I actually wrote this one. I didn't steal this from anywhere. I came up with this all by myself. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Um, so let's go over this. So, and hopefully there's no mistakes, huh? <laughs> uh, Elizabeth is planning a wedding reception. Guests will be seated at smaller tables that seat four people or larger tables that seat nine people. Based off the current RSVPs, Elizabeth knows that there are at least 120 guests will be attending. Right, so maybe more, right? Maybe if, if more RSVPs come in before the wedding or uh, before the deadline to RSVP, right? Maybe that will go up, but right now we know there's at least 120 guests. We could at least get started planning, right? Each smaller table costs $10 to rent, and each larger table costs $25 to rent. Now, you might say, well, why not just rent smaller tables? It looks a little bit more cost efficient, but the, not, the larger tables might be nicer, right? Maybe they're, maybe they're prettier or something, right? Uh, who knows? Uh, now, Elizabeth has a, a budget of $350 for renting out tables. Uh, the bride and groom want there to be at least six larger tables for their close family and friends. Um, I will say, it's probably atypical that you would have tables that seat just four people at a wedding reception um they would probably be bigger realistically but whatever right just go with it for the sake of the problem so i want at least six larger tables now the goal is to write a system of inequalities that could be used to determine the number of smaller and larger tables possible that basically that satisfy all three of these requirements the three requirements being you want to seat enough guests so seat at least 120 guests you need to fit within the budget, so no more than $350. And you want to satisfy the bride and groom's request, being that there are at least six larger tables. And then finally, once you've set up this system, uh, give a possible solution for the problem. Give a possible solution. So that there's many different answers you could, you could put for that last part. So let's get started. Let's, let's make this system here. First, let's define my variables. Uh, the variables in this case, the things that are changing is the number of tables. So I'm going to label, let's say, let's call X the number of smaller tables. And I will call Y the number of larger tables. So this is the number of larger tables. Okay. And just for future reference, just so we have it, um, a num smaller table seat four people, and they cost $10. The larger table seat nine people, but they cost $25. Those must be some nice tables, right? <laughs> okay, so let's set up our system of inequalities. Uh, I'll scroll back up. The first one, the first condition, at least 120 guests will be attending. So I need to figure out some equation or inequality that represents the total number of guests, right? Well, each table seats some amount of people, right? Um, so if I'm at a smaller table, each smaller table is going, if you multiply that by four, that tells you the number of people seated at smaller tables. If you take the number of larger tables, y, and multiply that by 9, that tells you the number of people sitting at larger tables. Adding those together gets you your total number of people seated at either table. And you want this total number to be at least 120. Now think about that word, at least. This is, this is really important. At least. Does that mean less than or does that mean greater than, right? Less than? or greater than? Well, if it's at least something, that means 120 should be smallest, right? 
that 120 should be the smallest number of guests because the total needs to be more than 120. So I might even I might even write that down just in little yellow right here. Right? The total number of guests should be equal to or more than 120 since it's at least yeah okay so that's our first equation next let's talk about the price the budget right i need to fit within a budget of 350 dollars so whatever my budget is it needs to be less than that right um oh did i do something here hello oh sorry Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. I got distracted. So um, I need this to be less than $350. Less than or equal to $350. Um, now, each smaller table costs $10. So if I take the number of smaller tables, X, multiply that by 10, that's how much it costs to buy the small tables. And if I multiply the number of larger tables, y, by 25, that's how much it costs to take those, right? And there you go. That's our, that's our second inequality, um, the total cost being less than or equal to $350. We don't want to go over that. So I might write that again here. Uh, budget cannot exceed... $350, you say must be less than or equal to. I'm going to write that a little bit prettier. Must be less than or equal to $350. Okay? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now we're, all, we're just one away now. Now we just need to satisfy the groom and bride's uh, requirement. That requirement being that... The let's look again. Where did it say? Where's my little laser pointer? They want at least six larger tables. So the number of larger tables y should be more than six. So y should be more than or equal to six, right? Uh, I'm gonna say one last time. Uh, must have six or more large tables, which in this case is Y. And there you go. That is our system of inequalities. It's three equations. Do take notice here. It's three equations, two unknowns, um, and that's fine. Um, remember, it's it, what's wrong, or I shouldn't say what's wrong, but what you can't solve is if you have fewer equations than variables. If I had three equations, uh, or if I had um, three variables and two equations, that would not be solvable. I couldn't find a true solution to that. Uh, but in this case, I have two variables, three equations. That's, that's plenty. That's fine. That's no problem. So that's my system. But I need a possible answer. So I'll do this in blue. Possible solution. Now, how do I do this? Graph these in a calculator. Okay, that's what I even put this. Graph in a calculator. Now, you could do it by hand. You, you could. I, I mean, you could sketch this by hand. And that would be fine. But since the numbers are kind of big, 120, 350, uh, and the slopes are all a little bit goofy, um, I'm not going to bother putting this in slope-intercept form. I'm just going to graph it. And that's fine. So let's do that. Let's go over to Desmos. Um, and, oh, shoot. I, <laughs> what, what were the equations? 4x plus 9y is greater than or equal to 120. So let's do that. Get out of here, stupid iPad. 4x plus 9y, uh, where's y, is greater than or equal to 120. 
The next equation, I believe, was 10x plus 25y is less than or equal to 350 to meet that budget requirement. And the last one was that the number of tables should be at least six, meaning six or more. And now I scroll out. I really like Desmos because it's so easy to zoom. Uh, you can zoom out on your graphing calculator too, but sometimes it's hard to read. Desmos is pretty nice with scaling. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. I will give it that. Um, so we're looking for the overlapping region, which means it needs to be blue, red, and green. So if you want to see them piece by piece, there's the red piece. There's the blue and red, right? You can see in between those. But then that green layer kind of tops it off at that bottom there. So I could pick any point in this triple shaded region here. I wish I could highlight it for you, but I don't have a, uh, an overlay to do that. Um, but I could label a single point. Let's pick, uh, I think, let's see, 5 comma, we're going to just play around with this, 5 comma 12. Ooh, right on the line, right on the line. That's okay. That, that would work. Um, but to be, just to be safe. Can we pick 5.11? Ooh, yikes. So maybe not 5.11. 5.12 is right on the line, um, which is fine. If it was a dashed line, that would be bad. But because it's a solid line, that's okay. That's all right. It lies on the blue line, which passes. It's above the red, and it's above the green. So 5 comma 12 is perfectly fine. Um, could we brainstorm another one? Maybe um, maybe 2 comma something? 2 comma like 13? Hey, there you go, right? 2 comma 13, that works. Um, yeah, that's good. So, I mean, there's, there's lots of points you could pick in here. Um, I think I want to pick one more. I, I, and that'll be my final answer that I write. How about, how about, um... 9 comma 10. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Fits right in there. Look how, look, look at that. 9 comma 10. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to go with that solution. Uh, possible solution, 9 comma 10, meaning, what is that meaning? What does that mean? Uh, 9 small tables and 10 large tables. Okay. I say, boop, possible solution. And there you have it. So I hope that's a nice, pretty solid example of systems of linear inequalities. Um, that that, that kind of covers all the beats we need. All right. Um, usually, with these real world scenarios, sometimes you do see this on the SAT. Uh, there's, I think there's usually like one question like this and they're pretty wordy. Notice there was a lot of words here, right? I mean, oh my goodness, all the words on this page. But read through it carefully. Just think about what each equation needs to be. The first step is defining those variables. Once you got those variables, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to picture. I would just write them down, right? Say, see how I wrote? X is the number, Y is the number, larger, smaller. That helps you. Uh, it, it helps your brain. So, okay. Hope this was useful, uh, and I'll see you around.